<laughs> I got it. Well, you got the mic. Am I on? Okay, so it's an honor for me to be here with you all today. And I want our time together to be meaningful. And so I ask for an influx of grace to help this transmission happen. Um, so good news, as Paymon said, you can heal tooth cavities. And I'm presenting to you this information as my service. I'm here to help you guys if you want help. So I'm going to share with you some testimonials that I got that illustrate both the problem of tooth cavities and what we can do about it. This is from Leroy. I was ready to have my tooth pulled and the dentist said I needed a root canal. I had no money for either procedure. I was in pain and the cheek had begun to swell. But after a month of dietary changes, it is hard for me to even feel which tooth was bothering me. Thanks a million, Ramiel. Unbelievable. This is from Mark. He says, I had a toothache for over six months, and after going to the dentist three times and having two fillings placed, they concluded that I needed a crown or a root canal. After months of accelerating tooth pain, it only took minutes after a big serving of cod liver oil for my pain to completely go away. This is from Mike in Oregon. The practical advice in this book really seems to be reversing my tooth decay. Hallelujah, brother. The dentist wanted me to have two root canals immediately and two teeth filled. When I asked them, was there anything that I can do with nutrition and supplements to stop cavities, he said no. The dental visit was three months ago. My teeth feel stronger and have stopped aching. I bought the book for $28. What a bargain. The dental work was going to cost over $4,000. No wonder the dentists don't seem open to this stuff. Think, <laughs> think I'm excited? You will be too if you take this information and take your tooth health and put it into your own hands. So what the presentation I've designed for you today illustrates the problem and outlines the most critical points and the best changes that you can make today to help stop cavities. Specifically, I'm going to give you a way to reduce your cavities for the rest of your life by 40% or more. The focus here is to stop listening to people who are authorities, who are telling us what to do, who do not have our best interest at heart. And what we want to start doing is listening to our own intuition and our own sense of what r is right and wrong. I'm going to demonstrate compelling evidence on why changing your diet is a good idea. A woman phoned her dentist due to a large dental bill. I'm shocked, she said. This is three times what you normally charge. Yes, I know, said the dentist. But you screamed so loud, you scared away my other two patients. <laughs> this is, um, a patient asked the dentist if it was nasty to put his hands in people's mouths all day. So the dentist replied, no, it's pretty fun. I just imagine I have their hands, uh, my hands in their wallet instead. <laughs> so uh, uh, my perspective on dentistry is not to ruin it or get people to stop going to the dentist. I am here to help or encourage dentistry to change so that it promotes and supports people's health. It's normal for many of us to feel afraid of going to the dentist. And my belief is that there's a good reason why we feel afraid. It's not that there's anything wrong with the dentist or anything wrong with us, but rather our body is giving us a message. It doesn't want what's about to happen. Let's look at what a dentist does. That arrow is pointing to a cavity. After, uh, when a dentist sees you have a cavity, he's going to drill a larger hole in the tooth. A dental student wrote me recently from India. This is what he said. As a dental student, I drill teeth every week. I do this to pass exams. 
When I see my patients sitting on the dental chair with their eyes closed, I feel for them because they are losing healthy tooth structure. So after the drilling and the filling, or we got drilling, filling, the dentist places a synthetic material in your mouth. You probably are familiar with the hazards of the mercury fillings that have been placed in our mouth, but even many composite fillings are very toxic. Uh, the common composites, for example, contain aluminum. It's better than mercury, but it's not natural. It's not life promoting. And after the filling, <laughs> filling. So, so what we're seeing here is a business model. Does the drilling, the implication of the drilling, filling, and billing is that your problem is solved, that your, your, your tooth, you had a tooth problem, they fixed it. But some dentists who have practiced for a long time, they will tell you that the teeth that need the crown and the root canals, the teeth that are problematic for people, are the teeth that have already been drilled and filled. Why do the teeth that have had the dental procedures, why are they the problematic teeth? Wasn't that supposed to solve the problem of the tooth? Modern dentistry is based on the concept of getting the bacteria out of your mouth and body. First, you have to brush. You have to brush to remove the bacteria, the plaque deposits, so forth. Then you have to floss. That doesn't get rid of enough bacteria, so you should use mouthwash. And if the mouthwash and the flossing and brushing don't remove all the bacteria, then you're going to need the drilling and filling, which we already discussed. And sometimes the drilling and filling is not enough. Bacteria somehow come back, and the dentist has to remove the bacteria by doing a root canal where they take the inside of your tooth, all because they want to stop that bacteria infection. When the root canal fails, the bacteria has overwhelmed the tooth and they extract a tooth and what you're left with either bridge or implant or dentures. This is the bacteria that is supposed to be the cause of tooth cavities. Do these little spheres really look like they're going to cause all of our dental health suffering? It might be a good idea to look at these at a higher magnification to see how bad they really are. <laughs> so what we've done is, before, when the, people didn't know about bacteria, they took the, uh, we thought disease was caused by evil spirits or entities, these entities come and attack us. But now, we have a name for these entities, we call them bacteria, and we say, this is the problem. The problem when you think bacteria are the problem is all you can do about it is clean out the bacteria or have your teeth filled. In other words, it puts us into the position of a victim. The bacteria theory is based on the work of Louis Pasteur, who invented pasteurization. The basic theory is that there's these germs outside of us and they attack us, and when our defense system is weak, our body can't fight off the germs. Meanwhile, there's another theory, Antoine Beechamp, who believed that germs don't attack us, but rather they evolve and change based on our environment. So with this other perspective, it's the environment that's important. The reason why Pasteur's germ theory is important is because modern dentistry is based on this theory. It seems that the idea that bacteria evolve in the environment makes sense if we look at nature. Redwood trees grow in the moist forest. Joshua trees grow in a dry desert. Redwood trees probably would not grow in the desert. The form of nature is following the function. This is the guy who invented our modern theory of cavities. What he did is he took a tooth and saliva and bread and put it in a test tube. And he found that after some time, there was a process that looked like tooth decay. But he never said that this was the only, uh, that teeth or bacteria and acids were the only way teeth would decay. He just said this is one idea that brings us in the right direction. 
So I'm going to read you exactly what Miller said. The extent to which a tooth suffers from acid depends on its density and structure. A perfect tooth would resist indefinitely the same acid to which a tooth of opposite character would succumb in a few weeks. In other words, acid and bacteria do not affect healthy teeth. That was his belief. 130 years later, American Dental Association crossed out. They say cavities are caused by bacteria. Dentists learned cavities are caused by bacteria. And they eliminated, eliminated this idea that, oh, by the way, and healthy teeth won't be affected by bacteria or by acid. Here is, is what uh, American Dental Association says. Tooth decay is a destruction of tooth enamel. It occurs when foods containing carbohydrates, milk, pop, raisins, cakes, or candy, are frequently left on the teeth. Bacteria that live in the mouth thrive on these foods, producing acids as a result. Over a period of time, these acids destroy tooth enamel, resulting in tooth decay. This change occurred in the 1940s by a vote by the International Association of Dental Research. What, there was a theory that said maybe cavities are caused by something in our body, like what we eat, or they're caused by bacteria. And it was never decided what was the real cause, or they were arguing with each other, but they voted bacteria is the cause, not food or anything else. What you see here on the right are the microscopic tubes in each of our teeth. Each tooth has three miles of microscopic tubes. The tubes in a tooth, there's nerve and blood supply. In the microscopic tubes is lymph fluid. So your teeth have a nutrient fluid that flows through it. This other picture uh, is a cover of a book, Dentinal Fluid Transport, in which there's over 40 years of research that demonstrates that cavities can be caused by a biochemical function in the body and not by bacteria. What, what, they, um, what they, these researchers found is that there's a mechanism in our brain. It's analyzing our uh, last talk talked about blood sugar and blood chemistry. Our brain analyzes our blood chemistry. And if the chemistry is one way, it instructs glands in our teeth to cause tooth decay. If, it's, if our blood chemistry is healthy, it instructs our teeth our, our, our teeth, to re, our glands, to tell our teeth to remineralize. So science proves bacteria theory is not accurate. Tooth decay is a problem for most of us. 90% of the population has cavities. For example, the average 20 to 39 year old, over 80% of them have at least one cavity. This is data from the Centers of Disease Control. This is a more, of more concern is how many teeth we start losing because of dental decay. The average 40 to 59 year old is missing over three teeth. And that's not including wisdom teeth. Once you get over 60, the average person is missing over eight teeth. We are told this is because of the aging process. And the dentist is stopping it. But this is graph shows us tooth decay in little kids. Kids aren't aging. The bar on the left, 24%, is how much uh, decay kids used to have. 28% is more, a more recent survey. It shows that tooth decay is on the rise in children. The red line shows the percent of children going to dentists. Tooth decay has gone up, and dental visits have gone up. The dental visits don't appear to be stopping the cavities. The green bar represents untreated decay. So we have more decay, more dental visits. The green bar shows us that there's about the equal amount of treatments, so all the teeth are being treated, but the problem is never solved. Are we to believe that 90% of the population is not brushing their teeth enough, flossing enough, getting tooth cleanings and dental visits enough? Or is there something wrong with what we've been told about our dental health? I'm going to get a drink of water. There's some dentists who've been trying to tell us 
that actually food is what matters. Weston Price was the head of dental research in uh, the association that became the American Dental Association. He has articles published even in the Journal of American Dental Association on healing dental cavities. Rather than focus on why, what's wrong with our diet, he went to other places to see why are there, he heard stories of people who didn't have cavities. He documented all his findings in a book which has been published for over 70 years. But the dentist doesn't tell you. <laughs> doesn't know a lot of times. The first place he went was to isolated region in the Swiss Alps. Here's what he said. They have neither physician nor dentist because they have so little need for them. They have neither policeman nor jail because they have no need for them. Why did these people not have a dentist? Well, are they genetically immune? Well, when Weston Price was there, he noticed that they had a th ceremony. They thanked the kind father for the evidence of his being and the life-giving qualities of butter and cheese when the cows graze near the snow line. The natives of the valley are able to recognize the superior quality of their June butter without knowing exactly why, pay due homage. So the native people there were healthy and they uh, uh, revered the special foods that they were eating. In this population, 0.3% of teeth had cavities. So one in 12 people had one t uh, cavity. So Weston Price is wondering, these people, they're healthy, they don't have dentists, they don't have policemen, Maybe it's because what they're eating. Maybe they're eating something good and that gives them a good structure for their body. On the left is the native children without cavities on the native diet. On the right is children in the modern town. In the modern town, they had dentists. In the modern town, they had physical education. They had toothbrushing education. And yet they were completely confused. Why do these modern kids have cavities? Instead of 0.3% of teeth with cavities, the modern groups on average had 25% of teeth with cavities. So on average, eight to 75 times more cavities with the modern group. Well, what did they eat? They eat white bread, jam, honey, sugar, syrup, chocolate, coffee, milk, veggies, and meat. When Weston Price uh, examined these children, he found that there were some modern school children who didn't have cavities. So he asked them, what are you eating? And every time, the modern children were eating, who didn't have cavities were eating some traditional foods. Weston Price was also curious why he saw milk uh, uh, dairies in the cities, but he didn't see anyone drinking milk. It turns out that the people use the milk to make chocolate, and they don't drink it. Stories have been long, long been told of the healthy people on the, island, uh, on the islands off the coast of Scotland. Their native diet is oats, oat cake, oysters, crab, lobster, and an important and highly relished article of their diet is baked, baked cod's head stuffed with chopped cod's liver and oatmeal. Now, I've made Paymon a special request that this is for dinner. <laughs> so, Okay, maybe some people are, are more genetically immune to cavities. That's, these people have genetic immunity. Here's two brothers. The one on the left, horrible tooth decay, missing his two front teeth. The one on the right, no cavities. Uh, the boy on the left insists, and keep in mind the word insists, he has to have his white bread jam, highly sweetened coffee and chocolates. His father told me with deep concern how difficult it is for him to get up in the morning. So if we want to go out and make a change in the world, we got to have energy. We got to be eating well. If we don't eat well, can't do very much. The boy on the right has excellent teeth. He eats oatmeal, oat cake, and lots of cod head with liver. <laughs> uh, interesting note is just 10 miles away from these brothers is a port town. In this port town, it's normal for people to have a full set of fake teeth put in in their 20s. Just 10 miles away, people are 32 times more immune to tooth cavities.
The difference is what they're eating. The primitive Eskimos, same thing. On the left, they eat seal, salmon, caribou, berries, grasses and seal, seal oil, organs of large sea animals, and whale fat. An interesting part about the healthy Eskimos is they eat a lot of their meat uncooked. Modern Eskimos have severe gum disease and tooth decay. Their main diet is white bread and sugary tea. Same thing on Fiji. Left is healthy, right is unhealthy. Weston Price noticed that a trader ship was there and um, they were exchanging their native food of dried coconut meat for flour, sugar, and so forth. And you get this is the result. In the top right is a healthy Aborigine. In the other, uh, the other pictures are Aborigines on reservations. It is doubtful, this is from Weston Price. It is doubtful if many places in the world can demonstrate so great a contrast in physical development and perfection of the body as that which exists between the primitive Aborigines of Australia, who've been the sole arbiters of their fate, and those Aborigines who have been under the influence of the white man. The white man has deprived them of their natural habitats and is feeding them on reservations. But it's not just the, the Aborigines who are suffering. Here's what Weston Price says. I have seldom if ever found whites suffering so tragically from evidence of physical degeneration as expressed in tooth decay and change in facial form. This has occurred on the best of lands that the primitive people formerly, formerly occupied and is a monument of the wisdom Uh, so, talking about this stuff always brings up uh, feelings in me. Because uh, I, can, I can just, I can feel how much our society, we, by eating this way, we're, hurt, we're hurting ourselves, we're killing ourselves. So this is, this is a, a warning to the modern civilization that has supplanted them. That these native people can live in the land and be superbly healthy and the white people come and their health is horrible. So, so the diet of the woman on the top right is, uh, this is what we're having for breakfast tomorrow. Roots, stems, leaves, berries, rodents, insects, beetles, grubs. <laughs> Last year, for some reason, the beetle oatmeal wasn't popular. Any idea why? Uh, birds and bird eggs, uh, they ate bats. The modern diet, milk, flour, sugar, sweets, pastries, etc. So here's Weston Price's message for us. It should not be only a matter of concern, but deep alarm that human beings can degenerate physically so rapidly by the use of a certain type of nutrition, particularly the dietary products used by modern civilization. Why are the modern foods so bad? What's wrong with them? Weston Price sent all the food to the laboratory. The indigenous foods had on average two to four times more minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. And more importantly, the indigenous foods had 10 times or more fat-soluble vitamins. Fat-soluble vitamins are A, D, E, and K. So if we're going to fix the problem today, let's focus on the worst uh, deficiency, which is the fat-soluble vitamins. That's, if we bring our fat-soluble vitamins up, maybe we'll stop cavities. So Weston Price, he didn't just analyze the nutrients. He went back to the United States. He told other dentists, give me your worst cases. cases the people having tons of cavities in their mouth. By placing him, them on a dietary protocol, he got over 95% effective control of tooth cavities. In severe cases, there was a 250 time reduction in cavities on Weston Price's dietary program. So he did the, we have anthropological evidence about what people are eating. We have scientific evidence 
Weston Price applied the evidence, showed that the fat soluble vitamins and minerals bringing that back will stop cavities, and you heard the testimonials at the beginning showing this works. In studying these indigenous groups all over the world, he found three categories of special foods. And it's the absence of these special foods, uh, the absence of these special foods explains why we have cavities and other health problems, or explains a part of it today. On the left, that's a, a cow uh, from Scotland representing dairy products. So healthy indigenous groups had dairy products from animals that ate grass like butter, cream, milk, cheese. On the right, the moose represents animals, but they didn't just eat the muscle meat, this, they ate the organs of the land animals, the eyes, the head, the brains, liver. The third category is food from the sea. Fat soluble vitamins are in shellfish, especially the gooey stuff. It's in oysters and clams. It's in the organs uh, from food of the sea. To emphasize how important fat-soluble vitamins are, Weston Price noted that when groups had two categories of fat-soluble vitamins, such as they had dairy and organs of land animals, they had much higher immunity than groups that only had one of these categories. So how do we bring the fat-soluble vitamin into our diet? Liver. Are you not excited? <laughs> All right, a few people like liver. It, it, it. <laughs> okay, a couple more people. If you guys come back next year, I'm sure you'll all like liver. <laughs> Takes time. Liver, liver, uh, uh, so there's the freedom movement and then there's the liver movement. <laughs> this is people who eat liver, they talk about it and we have conferences. And the, the advanced people, we eat it raw, we don't cook it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we need the fat soluble vitamin A and vitamin D in liver. It supports our hormone functions. It helps the body use protein. So we're, we need to eat protein to be healthy, but we need some vitamin A to absorb our proteins. It, it gives us a healthy physical physique. Now, the Canadian Indians believed that actually to be healthy, you have to eat every part of the animal every day. But we'll just go with liver for now. <laughs> this area in the red dashes that says 2D, that's new tooth enamel from taking from a, so this is a slice of a tooth the dark area is uh, stained. That's where decay can come in. The tooth pulp is in the center. When decay reaches pulp, you're in lots of pain. From six months of cod liver oil, this is a slice of a tooth, there is new tooth dentin forming, that new layer. So the decay is not going to reach to the pulp. The tooth is going to be protected. Uh, in a study in the 40s in New Zealand, a group of schoolgirls were divided in half. The group that had more immunity to tooth cavities and the group with less immunity. The group with less immunity was given two teaspoons of cod liver oil per day for six months. After six months, the group that originally had less immunity had 40% more immunity to tooth cavities. So all you need to do to make a 40% or more reduction in tooth cavities for the rest of your life is take one to two teaspoons of cod liver oil per day. People want to know what kind to get. We just have, uh, just so happens that the best cod liver oil available on the market today is with green pastures right over here. And it was a surprise that they were coming to the conference. I didn't know. Uh, the reason why this one is better is because it's fermented, whereas regular cod liver oils are heat treated, they're processed, they're filtered, and a lot of the natural vitamins are taken out. Here we have the natural vitamins A and D in their more organic form where we have all the factors. This is French fries fried in duck fat. 
Now, our doctors and news reporters and all those people want you to not eat fat. They say, however, the idea to avoid fat and avoid saturated fat because of, to avoid cholesterol is not scientifically based. Cholesterol is vital to mammals. Studies show that low blood cholesterol contributes to arthrosclerosis as much as high blood cholesterol. The body produces three to four times more cholesterol than we eat. So if you stop eating cholesterol, it doesn't affect your cholesterol level. 20 studies, 20 different studies of people with heart attacks have shown, have not shown that eating more fat results in heart attacks. This information has been presented in medical journals for a long time, but has not been presented to the public. The people with high cholesterol levels generally live the longest. Thank you. So not only does fat, especially saturated fat, not only is it good for us, it feels good. Our body wants it. Think of like juicy beef ribs or ice cream. We all crave these foods. Now, ice cream from raw milk is better. Or french fries, this is good. Our body goes, mmm, I want fat. <laughs> Fats lubricate the body. If you don't eat fat, you're going to go on a sweet binge instead because fat is the most densest form of, of energy available to us. And if you don't have enough energy, then, um, then you're going to eat sweets instead. And sweets are, we know, aren't generally good for us. And they also contain uh, many times man-made unhealthy fats. So a healthy fats are fats from healthy animals. The healthier the animal is, the healthier the fat is for you. So lard, suet, tallow, butter, cream, and then healthy vegetable fats can be olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, avocados. So if fat's good for us, then we should be eating butter. Uh, and yes. Paymon wants me to show you. Uh, he has a, there's a picture of regular butter and a picture of grass-fed, or this is regular butter and grass-fed butter. So if you want, I'll have this at my table if you want to look at the difference in color or uh, sample some. So what, what Weston Price did to stop the cavities in people is he gave people cod liver oil and he also gave them a concentrate of butter. And it's not just any butter. It's not butter that's uh, fed in factory farms. It's the butter that's effective in stopping tooth cavities is the butter that comes when the cows eat rapidly growing green grass. The sacred food of the Swiss people is the butter in June when the cows eat grass near the snow line. Weston Price called the factor in butter that mineralizes the uh, cavities activator X. Activator X could be related to vitamin K, vitamin F, vitamin D. So if you want to take anything from today, eat more butter. Where do you get good butter? Uh, organic Pastures Raw Butter is available in the stores. There's uh, two store-bought butters, Anchor Butter and Kerrygold Butter, which are from other countries. They're pasteurized, but they have some of the Activator X because a lot of the butter is from pasture-fed animals. You can order butter directly from farms, and uh, if you have severe cavities, Green Pastures makes a butter concentrate <coughs> supplement, and you guys go ahead and feel free to sample it. And the butter concentrate supplement has the special factors that help mineralize our bones. Butter, together with liver, works twice as good. They synergize with each other. This man is filling his car with vegetable oil. This is what we should be doing with our vegetable oils. <laughs> Canola oil, soy oil, corn oil, safflower oil, butter substitutes, margarine. These are in general, fake oils. They are made by industry. They are made for profit. So when someone is telling you, eat vegetable oil and don't eat butter, maybe it's because it supports the vegetable oil industry. Another problem with uh, these vegetable and nut or seed oils is they go rancid really easily. So you're eating a rancid oil because they're uh, processed at high temperatures, high pressures, they have chemical solvents in added to it. 
This is stuff that's not good for our body. And yet, this, our cell walls are made out of fat. So when you eat these fats, modern fats, you have a body made out of some weird stuff. <laughs> so we looked at the fat-soluble vitamins. What about minerals? I'm going to tell you a simple way to get more minerals and, and a little bit about something people don't know that's taking all the minerals out of the body. We saw uh, in Nancy's talk that graph of all the minerals, that chart, where each mineral needs the other mineral. So if we're losing minerals, we're going to have a problem. And we want to be getting as much minerals as possible. Calcium and phosphorus are the key minerals we need for teeth and bones. Raw milk is the easiest way to get calcium and phosphorus. It also has fat-soluble vitamins added into it. More advanced practitioners, the, the people who come to the liver conference, <laughs> uh, we, we uh, ferment the milk and make kefir. Uh, so have one to four cups or, or more of milk per day. Just drink as much as you want. So we're told we should be eating more bran, right? Bran's good for us, right? It solves all your health problems. Uh, one, uh, so we got uh, rice, uh, examples of bran. Bran muffins, uh, oatmeal, bran cereal, whole wheat products, brown rice. We are told that these products are healthier for us because they have more minerals. Now, I've noticed that at least I've tried to eat bran muffins before. They don't taste good to me. I like the, the muffins with the white flour or soft flour. The reason why I bring up this issue of bran is because I found time and time again that people who have cavities that aren't healing are consuming these foods. The idea we should eat bran got popularized in the 60s with an oat bran craze and also by the research of a physician, Dennis Burkett. Now, Dennis Burkett went to Africa and, and was like, wow, these people, they don't have cancer, they have good bowel function. Must be the brand they're eating. <laughs> he forgot to mention that in most uh, grain-eating uh, areas in Africa, they removed the bran. <laughs> What's in the bran, grains, nuts, and seeds that is a problem for our health is phytic acid. What phytic acid is, and yeah, this is all new stuff I've just been working on the last month. Phytic acid is the mineral phosphorus. That's a mineral we need, except it's in a form we can't digest and absorb. When you, and, and this is in nuts and seeds and grains. Their, their chief phosphorus content is actually phytic acid. So this bound up form of phosphorus, when it comes into our body, when we eat the whole grain food, when we eat our bran muffin or bran cereal, instead of giving us the mineral phosphorus, it removes the mineral. It removes calcium. It binds to iron. It binds to zinc. Binds to magnesium. So instead of getting minerals, we're losing minerals. We need minerals to support our body function, our enzymes, our whole digestive system. So people who eat a lot of phytic acid are going to have mineral deficiencies. Studies in the 30s and 40s showed that by giving oatmeal to dogs, they could produce rickets in the laboratory. In other words, the effect of phytic acid is so powerful, it will cause severe bone loss. That's why I do not feed babies whole grains or much grains of anything. So I'm going to give you... So, the way people ate these foods before, to, either they didn't eat a lot or they let the bacteria ferment the food for them. So you take the whole grain, you pre-digest it, the bacteria and enzymes can eat up the gluten, they can eat up the phytic acid, they'll convert it into vitamins and minerals we need, and then we eat it. This is through, uh, an example of this is sourdough bread. So my advice to you for those who eat bread, some people, because of the phytic acid and other problems with grains, some people avoid them altogether. But if you eat bread, get sourdough bread. That's the best bread. Tastes good too. Don't eat a lot of nuts and seeds. A little bit could be okay. If you eat a lot, it's a problem. Uh, just one quick example. A woman contacted me and her daughter, little girl 
was having uh, had a 15-minute seizure, and she couldn't believe it. And I asked her, have you been eating any nuts? Oh yeah, I've been eating raw almond butter. And she stopped. The girl didn't have seizures. So there's some evidence that some nuts that are not processed, raw nuts, might be really toxic. Don't eat products that are, have bran added or high in bran. Take that out. Also be careful of breads that say they're just sprouted. Sprouting only does not remove much phytic acid. And also another common problem is things like brown rice pasta. Brown rice pasta, if it's not fermented, has the phytic acid. So if you're grains, if you're eating a lot of grains that are the whole grain, it has to be fermented somehow or you're losing minerals really quickly. So, so if you think about what the health authority is telling us, high protein, low fat, eat lots of bran, how can you not get sick? Leafy greens, vitamin C, calcium rich foods block the effect, uh, anti-nutrient effects of phytic acid. Also, vitamin D from liver will uh, minimize the calcium loss. So you want to be having some liver if you're eating whole grains. Where do you get your food? I like to get my food from the farmer's market. Usually this supports uh, fresh food, sp supports small industry, and uh, supports humane animal practices and practices that are more harmonious. If you don't go to the farmer's market, you can order directly from the farm. And some health food stores have organic meats uh, as a third option for where to get your food. People, um, aren't, people need to be careful, or we need to all be careful with how we use protein. When you cook, if you eat a lot of overly cooked protein, it's going to put a burden on your digestive system. So to be healthy, we want to eat foods, proteins, that are in a way that's easy for us to digest. So instead of just having well-cooked proteins, have some rare-cooked proteins, like some lamb chops. Have some raw proteins, like sushi or oysters. And if you eat cooked proteins, have it cooked sometimes in a stew or have it cooked at low temperature. And the higher the quality of the protein, the, uh, the more quality protein your body will have to work with. So if you eat factory farm meats, your body will use factory farm protein to build itself. This fructose is the real evil thing that we need to be concerned of. Forget about bacteria. We need to look about these synthetic sugars. All those pictures you saw was from real sugar. Fructose is fake sugar. It's not absorbed or recognized by the body. We already talked about this earlier, so I will just remind you. Uh, let's see, the average person is eating over 80 pounds of fructose or more per year. So I found that when people eat fructose, it just causes all kinds of imbalances and they're going to have tooth problems, gum problems, hormone problems. Replace with natural sugars. Uh, one thing about stevia is people use this in like a glycerin tincture. That's not good. If you have the whole herb, whole herb stevia, maple syrup, honey, rapadura. In general, we don't want to get too much of our energy from sugar. We want to get our energy from fat and carbohydrates and protein. So Weston Price said that tooth decay is not only unnecessary, but an indication of our divergence from nature's fundamental laws of life and health. In other words, tooth cavities are not inevitable, but happen when we violate the laws of our natural world, which we are a part of. So your choice is keep doing it the old way. Oh, wait, I have to. So I just want to tell you a little bit about my book. If you like the information here, it's all in the book. I designed the book so that you wouldn't have to talk to me. All the information that you need. <laughs> uh, but I, I wanted to empower people so that you feel like I got what I need. There's five tooth decay curing protocols, including Weston Price's program, 
than this Melvin Pages program. And the synthesis of all these programs, which has come from years of trial, error, and success. I talk about how you can work with mercury fillings, fluoride, and other dental health problems, how to heal cavities in children, and answers to frequently asked questions. Even if you feel like you don't want to get this for yourself, you know, help out your friends. We, we need to inform people that, hey, you know, I just had a friend, he had a root canal. It's like, if a lot of people say, gosh, I wish I should have known, I would have known. Um, and uh, nowadays they're performing root canals for anything. There's over 30 million root canals performed per year. Most of them are not medically required. So this information helps people only have dental treatments if they absolutely need it and prevent the need for dental treatments when they don't need it, which is a lot of the time if, you're, if you change your diet. The old way, let the dentist fix it. Blame bacteria and keep your same diet. The new way, change your diet. You will feel healthier. You will stop cavities. And you will keep your natural teeth longer. I believe that we are not here to suffer from disease, but that we can be here and overcome disease. Thank you.